Hello. Can you hear me, guys? Maybe you can type something so that you know we uh, get to see. Hello, Deepika Gupta. I can see you. <laughs> so what we'll do is we are going to speak about the story of India. Especially, we are going to talk about this concept called as the ancient Indian history. See, this ancient Indian history is very very important for us. You know why? God, one second. Uh, one second, guys. Sorry. Hello, hello. A lot of people have joined. I can see. Let me see if I can uh, draw on this. Uh, pointers. Lace up pen, I think, yeah. So this could be a very interesting lesson for us because we are going to see the history of India as a timeline. Now, what do I mean by timeline? Timeline is a very, very important thing for us. Why? Because before studying our ancient Indian history, before studying you know the whole concept of you know uh, the idea of art and culture, it is very important for us that if we can really really put all of them in perspective in a big timeline. For example, you would re re read about sculpturing, but before reading about sculpturing, it is very very important to know that when in the history of India is that this thing was going to be very very active. So that is why I'm saying you know this topic becomes very very important for us. Now as you before any without saying much. You know, let me. Uh, uh, this is going to be very, very interesting thing for us because we we are going to hear all of this in a very, very active way. Because I will be. You can ask me questions, uh, and you can. I will be answering you those answers. But uh, what is important for us is that uh, this, this. Uh, uh, you know, I keep on talking and I try to finish this thing in one hour. Right? You can uh, read about all of my details here. You know, you can follow me on this app and all. Right? You can see in your app if you see this is where uh, how I look like and you know all my you know plus courses are going to be there. So you can really subscribe to that thing. This is very very interesting now because in uh, earlier we used to have all this you know individual vaga courses. Right? Now what is happening is that we have one integral thing which is going to be. In, uh, in in like you know one particular thing you know I don't know the money you can see what is a package which really suits you but I think it's a very interesting deal because you get to listen from you know experts in this field for from a very very uh, you know standard format now uh, but let's not waste our time on this particular thing and uh, let's uh, let's go into our thing now uh, let me introduce myself I am Nitin Kunne Parambal and I come from this place called as Palakkad in Kerala. Right, so uh, and I've done my BTech from Kuchu University of Science and Technology. I've done my masters from IIT Kharagpur. In fact, I'm also pursuing my masters in history from IGNO. You see, I, I've, I've been appearing for you as this, you know, uh, I've been uh, appearing for this, attempting for this, you know, our uh, UPSC exams. I, in fact, went for interview once in 2016. Huh? And then what is very interesting for us is that, you know, I also have very three years of you know, teaching experience in history field. So that is something which we can, you know, really look forward to because I've seen I've taught this exam for a very long time. So uh, what? Let's do this thing that you know we are going to take the questions in every 15 minutes, right? I will finish one topic and ask you questions. Uh, ask whether any there's any questions and I will really look into that for topic. Until then, you know, just keep on listening. Now let's understand where is all of this history coming from. See, India is a land we have in a lot of history, a rich, rich source of history is there in India, right? Well, for a very long period, people have been living here. And this happens with respect to Stone Age. Stone Age is probably the first time that you can see people are going to settle down in this place and they are really going to, you know, um, you know, uh, we are going to talk about their history. In that Stone Age can be divided into three sections. First one is called as a Paleolithic Age. The second one is called as a Mesolithic age and after Mesolithic age what comes is a Neolithic age. See Paleo, when you think about Paleontology, what is it? Something very very old. See old things are what is called as you know the Paleo, right? So you can say Paleolith Moleto, the idea it is a very very old thing. Paleolithic means an old stone age, Mesolithic means a middle stone age, Neolithic Moleto, the new stone age. Now, what is the difference between all of this? See, in Paleolithic, as with respect to the tools which they use. See this tool which they are using here? 
what can you see you can see that there is some kind of a stone tool which they have really cut into you know one side they have cut in right so in this side what can you see you can see very very sharp edge on the other hand side also you see you know very very sharp edge so this is called as a hand axe what is it a hand axe hard jo kulhadi jo malte hai na that's the thing you know it's a very very uh, unique thing and with which you know they are really able to make stone tools which was a very very important revolution in people's life in people's life because you know with which they are going to do a lot of interesting stuff right you know they are now they are able to cut they are able to you know do a lot of new new things at the same time in the mesolithic age can you see that tools are going to transform what can you talk about this tool this tool is a bada tool isn't it but this one can you what what can you see you can see it's a very very small tool and what what does it look like kya jaisa dikh raha hai bolo aap i'm seeing in the uh, comment section what does it look like this and this and all sir if religion is separated from history and polity then why time don't tell but Ah, uh, okay. Um, Vedanta, you have a very interesting question. Vedanta is asking him, you know, if religious religion needs to be really classified on this thing, you know, then why do we base all of this with respect to BC and AD? See, ah, uh, that is why we have, you know, completely ah uh, changed this thing, na. Now what happens is, you know, this is exactly the same kind of Christian people. Now, now we won't be able to talk about BC and AD. Rather, what are we talking about? We are talking about BCE rather, and you know. it is called as a ce what is it common era and before common era good vedan this is i know mistake is from our side you know because we are used to that terminology but right now people have they rectified it already you know now it is called as common era and before common era does that answer your question right now this this ravi says that it is microlith but you know what exactly microlith is it should serve a purpose right what what, what does it really look like Now this, my friends, is an arrowhead. What is an arrowhead? Arrowhead is basically when you have that, you know, uh, bow and arrow. That arrow ka jo head is that. That is what is being really reflected. So that is basically happening in the Mesolithic era. And when you come to Neolithic era, what can you see? People have started to settle down somewhere. What can you see here? What is this in the background? Can you see? There's a river here, right? They have domesticated, you know, a dog. they have domesticated a bull they are making this do, uh, you know bull do a lot of work they are doing you know a separate you know kind of you know uh, uh, construction here which is basically the houses so instead of living in caves they are starting to live in houses now and they are going to do settled agriculture so this is the difference between a horn type you mean this horn the horn of this this one is that what deepika you trying to say And uh, this is just a, you know nothing of that sort. You know this is basically arrowhead, mesolithic, and this one. So, but from our exam point of view, it is really really important because we are going to talk about something which is called as the beam bed cut caves. Because these people were ah uh, this exactly you know it looks like spear right? Ha. Huh. So that is the thing. Now look at this. These people are very very cool. How do we know that? Because this is something called a beam bed cut caves. Can you tell me where is beam bed cut caves? Which place is Bhim Gate Ka Caves? Tell me, I'm watching the thing. Bhim Gate Ka Caves is going to be in Madhya Pradesh, right? Bhim Gate Ka Caves is going to be in Madhya Pradesh. Now, can you see this is actually ah correct, good, good, Abhijit. Now you know it's about the Madhya Pradesh. You can see Bhim Gate Ka Caves. Now see what are the pictures that you know these people have painted a lot of interesting thing here. Can you see here? Here, what can you see? You can see that there is a bull. Ah, huh? a bull is hunting a person. So here is a person. Can you see that thing? In here, what do you see? Here, you can see there is like a, a like you know some people who are uh, you know jumping on some kind of an animal and they're going on a procession and a lot of people are going with a procession, right? Here, what is it? Some kind of hunting scene is there. What is this? You can see there is going to be some elephant kind of thing. Some person riding on an elephant kind of thing. So basically, what is it? This this painting actually serves as a very important information. In fact, the only information that we have about these people is about some archaeological thing and these pieces of art. Yeah, I mean, you know, see, this one is basically you know a long trunk, na? 
and then you can see some kind of a thing and people are standing on top of it so they could have you know uh, trapped this elephant also right so this is a kind of thing so basically what are we looking at we are looking at a lot so this is basically a unesco world heritage site it is so important even for the mankind so interestingly what you can see is that people are talking about hunting scene they are not talking about you know religion what are they talking about they are talking only about you know hunting scenes and you know you so we can see that you know people are uh, uh, so can you see a lot of people are working together so this kind of society is called as a band society right band society people are working together it is not mammoth it's just an elephant only you know a mammoth could be not here in india we never have that idea of you know uh, the uh, ice age right so maybe we cannot really say that mammoth was there na so that maybe it is elephant only hmm? loxodonta africana and elephas maximus <laughs> so that's the kind of thing which you can really look at so that is the thing about uh, the, this kind of you know these these uh, uh, are uh, you know bimbeka uh, uh, people and you know neolithic mesolithic i mean paleolithic me, uh, me, mesolithic and neolithic so what is very interesting here is that this neolithic society is going to give rise to something called as a big civilization it is one of the largest civilization in the ancient world and that is the indus valley civilization see where, where do you think where the indus is can you see here is where indus is going to come see this is the river indus right it's coming where from where somewhere from you know tibet nepal you not know, tick 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 and it is coming kashmir and it is coming all the way here and then it is coming and going and in, uh, in entering here isn't it so that is the indus river now the problem with indus river if they, if i draw like this and if i draw a port is like this which is the port that i'm looking for which do you think is this port if this is indus and it's a port like this in this side of you know pakistan region ah karachi na karachi port and all you can really see you know in this side here you can see in this side is called as sindh and there you can see important port here in this region is definitely karachi cool now and look at this uh, here what happens is that these people are going to have a law important mini uh, sindhu culture right so this is called as sindhu culture now problem is that see it is not against indus alone what you can you see you can see there is going to be many other things you know chenab ravi satlej you know you can see you know ghagra hakkar you know Uh, uh, lothal is going to be somewhere here lothal is going to be in gujarat na lothal is somewhere here i'm talking about the modern day port which exists in that region that is karachi right there's nothing to do with indus valley civilization at that point of time in karachi we will we'll not even show whether you know civilization exists uh, but you know you can see that here in gujarat region you have something called as a lothal ha now what can you see here is when uh, these people are going to uh, this indus uh, nadi is going to flow now interesting thing is that though we call this indus valley civilization one thing that really needs to be observed is that it is not really confined to indus valley but it is also it, it's also going to be there in the uh, you can say you know it's there other places so some people say we can call it sindhu saraswati culture people say that thing but many people say that you know no it's better to call it harappan civilization why the first city to be developed uh, to excavated here is going to be harappa hello mandi huh Uh, you can see you know harappa right now if you really see harappa what are the other important cities you can see the biggest of the lot in haryana which is that rakhi ghadi ha uh, the one where you know we found fire altars which is that kali bangan ha uh, then you can see very important uh, you know port kind of thing which is it's not port exactly we can call it as a dockyard a dockyard so what is it you have a lothal culture then important city what is in gujarat you have dhola vira what is it dhola vira a place where you found a lot of you know uh, gems and you know all that thing you know the bead industry what is this chandhudaro a place where you know where you found a great bath what is that mohanjudaro right then you have see, see many stuff like that is there right so basically what you have a, a place this is something which is uh, going to be there in lot of uh, you know in uh, lothal lothal rakhi ghadi all this thing is going to be there now what is really help uh, you know what what really helps us uh, is that there are going to be a lot of uh, sorry uh, you see the extent of the civilization to which all places is going to be there look at this uh, maybe i can uh, show you this thing okay uh, with the eastern 
no it is actually there na look at this this nadi this khagar hakkar nadi right that you really see here is basically what it is the saraswati nadi it is said that you know, it really uh, got uh, you know dried up that that kind of happens you know the uh, it usually happens that you know people the nadi sometimes you know they go uh, you know they go out of the you know the you know the the coast changes or sometimes they dry up so all these kind of things are there uh, yes vedant speaks about one place you know i didn't want to really bring it here so but what you can really see is that sorry uh, so what you can see is that here in the afghanistan region in the northern post port you have something called as shor tugai what is the shor tugai shor tugai it is said that you know these people actually had a trading outpost trading outpost that means all this thing used to go like this and they used to have a trading outpost in afghanistan northern afghanistan and wahan se it used to go to the other places like you know you remember in mesopotamia there is going to be civilization in china there is going to be civilization in africa there is going to be civilization in egypt like that this mesopotamian people and this harappan people they always were in touch so people think that uh, this there is going to be something called as shorth guy where from the civilization actually communicated to what our um, uh, the mesopotamian civilization is it okay cool so now when you see the four extend of this place the first one is going to be here near the iran border and its name is sutka gendor evening tanya sutka gendor cool Ah, huh. next one you can see in this most extent in in, in your in UP side there is one place. What is that? Alamgirpur. Here towards this extent there is one place here that place is Daimabad. In the northern most extent you can see Manda, which is in Kashmir. So what is that? You can see a civilization which is spread over. this lot of places is it okay ha in rajasthan in the desert region you don't have anything but you know in this region you have a lot of thing basically in like you know punjab western up kashmir you can see the other the other side people's punjab you can see you know in in our sindh and in in gujarat region so very 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 interesting place cool ha now you know what is, i mean we, these people also were like very very cool how do we know about this thing because you can see they built a lot of structures and lot of interesting thing and to an extent to which one one could actually say they can actually be competing with i mean if i would rather say it is much much better than you know the modern day india such precise crisp way of you know working so can you see here what is it can you see the kind of buildings which these people made the kind of structures which these people made ha huh. can you see this one yeah vedant yeah daimabad is common between you know in this valley thing and you know this this chalcolithic thing uh, because you know this chalcolithic is a very interesting thing because you know chalcolithic people used to use copper and you know let's not confuse ourselves with this thing it's a broad timeline so let's not uh, really get into this chalcolithic problem because chalcolithic makes it a bit more you know complicated okay now uh, yes but it is for your information daimabad is common between you know indus valley civilization and you know also the chalcolithic thing because in fact you know some people actually say that uh, you know daimabad the historians are of different opinions okay because this, uh, in daimabad you actually found lot of things from you know uh, uh, harappan artifacts were found but in this place called as daimabad Uh, they were predominantly it has a chalcolithic uh, thing also so some people say it is not a harappan site rather it's a trade which had happened between harappans and the uh, chalcolithic people and some people say you know uh, some other site you know you know that is what you know really they say is a border it's the one which is in north part of uh, daimabad huh? let's not uh, worry ourselves with that thing but i want you to ask see what is this thing that you see what is there in ganges similar way what you can see is that uh so you, you can see similar way people are going to have you know a holy dip in this particular thing this is basically in a place called as mohanjodaro uh this is basically in the place called as mohanjodaro right now look at this one they are going to have something called as seal can you see this person is going to have three phases can you see this is one phase this another phase 
and this is another face. So this is a person, uh, like Ankit says in his sarovar, oh, very good, it's great, but people have called it, very good, very good. A pond, right, so Sujata Gupta says it's a pond, so that's what exactly. Huh? <coughs> so this one, <coughs> thank you. Right, so here, what you can see is that, this is a person with three faces, and can you see he has a headgear, which looks like a, like a tribal king wala thing, right? He is seated in a yogic posture, like how you know our, uh, our Rishi Munis will be sitting like this, right? They'll be sitting. So that kind of thing is what you can really see. And then what you can see, you can see that here uh, there, there are some animals which are going to. Uh, thank you. Here you can see a lot of you know interesting uh, kind of thing where you can see now some deer is going to be there. Here what is that? A bull is going to be there. Here you can see a rhinoceros is going to be there. Here an elephant is going to be there. Here there is a tiger going to be there. So what does it really mean? This actually shows some form of Shiva. In fact, people call it as a Proto Shiva. Right? People call it as Proto Shiva. Now what is the importance of Proto Shiva? This, this is Shiva. You can see this could be you know, the Bhuta Ganam of Shiva. Then what will this be? This will become our Nandi. Nandi is the Vahanam of Shiva, right? Here you can see there is a rhinoceros. This could be Vrindi. So Nandi, Vrindi, Bhutaganam. See, so all of this is going to be in the uh, this scene. So that is why people say that he is like a master of all this Pashu Pala. And this is going to have some deep in a canal system. So underground, you can uh, you can see you know a drainage system was there, which is which is very very Roman uh, you know uh, not common, which is there very very small rooms. Can you see very very small rooms? Vedanta uh, sir, <laughs> he would have studied it. How else would he know about all of this? Right. Right, so this is the thing. So you can see a lot of, you know, granaries. People say this is going to be, what is granaries? What is granaries? Granaries are basically used to store grains. Used to store grains. See another picture here. This is something which is called a dancing girl. Uh, dancing girl. Of, of Harappa. Dancing girl of Harappa. This is very interesting. Why? Because see the way how this girl is post posturing herself. She is like doing this kind of thing. Like she is keeping her hand on her hip. Huh? Her head is tilted a bit. Her waistline is tilted a bit. Her you know uh, chest is tilted another bit. Leg is going to be tilted. So this kind of a posture is very very typical in one of the dance forms in India. And which is that dance form? That dance form, my friends, is basically the Odishi dance. Right? In Odishi dance, you can see this is called the Tribhanga. 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 Exactly, you know, uh, you know I, I'm just seeing this thing, the YouTube thing is a bit slow, so you can see that, you know, it comes a bit late, so, you know, it looks like a warehouse. Huh? So, that's going to be Tribhanga pose. Right. Uh, 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 Vedant, let's, let's, you know, keep it a bit simple. Uh, lost back techniques was used, like, you know, Chola also was using it. Basically, they used to, let's not get into that. This is a timeline thing. I don't have enough time to, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, explain these kind of details. There are a lot of other things. When it's a history optional wala thing, I'll be teaching it in a, a very detailed way in one of the, uh, you know, the Unacademy Plus course. If you really want it, you know, maybe we can discuss it there. There we have enough and more time. We'll be going in deep and deep and, you know, in more depth we'll be speaking about it. This is a timeline thing, na? Otherwise, if I really start addressing all this, uh, you know, Choto nitty I won't be able to finish this lesson. Because we've already lost a lot of time, na? So that's going to be there. And this thing is going to be a priest king. What is it? A priest king is going to be there. So here is, it really speaks about a society of, you know, our uh, Vedic people, uh, our uh, Harappan people, where they're going to say the priest and the polity, the king is going to be all, uh, you know, it's going to be there. Uh, 
uh, it's all going to be mixed. And Sujata asks about what you know, I think seven or eight rooms of greenery, if I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know about the exact rooms, but you know, there are quite a few. <laughs> right, I don't know what exactly is the number. Maybe that detailing is a bit too much, I think, you know. But if you really want, maybe you can research about it. I'm not sure how many rooms are there. But by the looks of it, I think, you know, we can actually see, let's say, where is it? Here you can see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, so it's more than seven or eight, now. In this picture itself, we have more. Mm. So that is going to be that. So this is about the Indus Valley Civilization. But what happened is that, so for some reason, what had happened is that from 1750 BCE, this whole civilization uh, came to an end. The whole civilization came to an end. Now, how did that civilization came to an end? Our historians have been, you know, thinking about this for a very, very long time. Right. Historians have been thinking about this for a very, very long time. Some people believe it is basically of an Aryan invasion theory. People say that, you know, uh, this, this is India and if this is Pakistan and if this is Afghanistan, there's a Central Asian tribes, basically, you know, from Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, all this place, you know, there are going to be some tribes called as Aryans who started invading, you know, towards this region. And they had basically conquered the Indus Valley people and they have destroyed it. Interestingly, what you can see is that in the early Vedic period texts like Veda and all, what you can see is that Indra, the king of the, uh, you know, the Vedic people is going to be, uh, or the Vedic god, you can see that, you know, people are going to say that this particular thing, Indra is going to be, a, uh, is, is called as Purandara. Purandara. Ha, huh, okay, I, he's talking about Wheeler's theory, yeah. Uh, it is not FC Wheeler, it's Mortimer Wheeler, na? FC Wheeler, me. it's Mortimer Wheeler. Mm. We, Wheeler's theory, yes. Huh? It's not FC Wheeler, it is more. Uh, uh, yes, in yeah, Vedanta, it's called Mohenjo-daro, it's called the Mount of the Dead. Huh? Just, uh, let's not get into details, too many things, you know. If, uh, there are a lot of things to be discussed here, you know. But let's not get into that, huh? So you can see, uh, Gautam Buddha first student, Kontha. We will talk about it. There are many people, Ananda, a lot of people like that, na? Upali, a lot of people like that. We will come to it later. Gautam, Sampalvikyu, we will talk about it. So, this is the thing. So, here you can see, uh, Aryan invasion theory is going to be there. Some people say it is not Aryan invasion theory, rather there is something called the ecological theory. Now, what is the ecological theory? They are going to say, there were a lot of floods in this region. You can see, you know, this region. Uh, Ah, no, no, why, why is it called as, you know, Purandara, Pura Boleto Fort. And you can see Harappan cities were always walled cities, right? So that's why they also called. And Purasya Antaha. Ant Boleto kya hai? End. So the one who brings end to the Pura is called as Purantara. What is it? Indra. So he might have attacked this thing. That's what, you know, multiple wheelers, Aryan invasion theory is basically based on this thing. But some people say it's an ecological thing. Some people say it is because of the course shifting of the river. But the modern theory says that we don't have any kind of, you know, a, 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 you know, a discontinuity in this Indian civilization. Rather, it says it's all continuous. Now, how do we know that thing? Because you can see in India, see that kind of thing, the uh, great bath. Can you see the exact kind of religion is all, kind of thing is followed by Hindus even now? Like in Kumbha Mela, we actually take dip in, you know, uh, the holy Ganges. You know, in Bhai Dooj, in, you know, Ara, in Bengal and all this Bihar region, that kind of thing is there. Even, you know, in Shabrimala, people go and take uh, bath in, you know, Pampa, the Pampa Nadi. So, these kind of things are there. So, what are this? It's very, very reflective of your ideas of, you know, our uh, this great bar. If you see the dancing girl, can you see it is you know similar to dance of Odishi? Odishi is interesting, the you know, oldest one. If you really see the Pashupati seal, what do you see? You can see Shiva, which is really been uh, you know seen here. Now, even if you see really now, you can see that Shiva Linga, the fertility cult, jo bolte na, 
that is even seen even today that kind of phallus worship jo bolte hain what is it phallus worship what is this phallus see ek bar dekho the modern day shivlingam jo dekh rahe hain aap that is not exactly uh, the genital organs of a man alone ha huh? aap dekhe i will be drawing something and you listen carefully look at it carefully you will understand what is that i am trying to say i'll show you see here what happens is that ha huh, maybe this is enough uh pointing thing let's see pen see you see ah uh, this is the side angle of a shivalinga right side uh, side angle of a shivalinga so what is this this people say that you know this is basically the penis of shiva and this is the you know the scrotum of shiva you know scrotum is basically where the balls and all is there right and this is the uh, thing so this is what you know the uh, male reproductive organ if you see it from the top angle what is what is it looking like it looks something like this what is it looking like this is looking like what uh, this is looking like a uh, <clears throat> a female reproductive organ which is vagina so there is a penis and there is a vagina in the shivlinga so what is this basically looking at this is basically telling us the idea of some kind of a fertility cult so what was there earlier it is there you know uh, uh, you know uh, here also what is changing of course of river See, um, see, course of changing river is a very, very normal thing. You can see, you know, uh, uh, you, you heard about this nadi in uh, um, which is called as the Soro of Bihar. What is it? The river is called as, uh, uh, you know, Kosi Nadi, right? Kosi Nadi changes every year after year. So, you know, is it really difficult for you know uh, people to really you know change the river? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's not a very uncommon thing. It is always there, right? So that is the thing. All right. Now. so that is what basically is a new theory and this came this was a question which came in 2015 uh, mains i think 2015 mains this question had come really okay now we go come to uh, uh, aryans see aryans the idea is that you know this sorry um so there is this our concept of aryans okay see aryans where did they come from as i explain people say that they came from the aryan homeland which is basically central asia what do you mean by central asia we are talking about uzbekistan turkmenistan tajikistan kazakhstan you know places like that samarkand places like that right in fact they were a set of people who actually spoke this language called as sanskritam sanskrit and all of this is actually compiled in a set of books called as vedas so that is one of the oldest known kind of literature for human beings oldest known literature all right now let's compare the religion of vedic people and what it looks like in the modern day right so if you see the first verse of you know veda can what can you see it is this thing you know अग्निमीले पुरोहितं यक्यस्य अग्निमीलेजम होतारम रत्नधातम वोट इज इट रियली मीन दिस इज एक्चुअली स्पीकिंग अबाउट अ थिंग कॉल एस अग्नि एंड हू इज अग्नि अग्नि इज अ पुरोहितम वोट इज पुरोहितम सो दे से अग्नि इज बेसिकली अ प्रीस्ट so in initial vedic period the priest is agni brahman is not the priest rather agni is the priest cool now when you really look at it how, how do we actually happen you know basically we say some mantram and we put that you know and all of that thing into some kind of a agni now agni burns and the smoke comes and the smoke goes up and bhagwan sees it from the top people used to believe that you know gods are sitting in the in, in, in the sky so they get that smoke and smoke carries the message right so the smoke is carrying the message so that is the why you can see agni mile purohitam so anything we can really see the first invocation mantra is for agni but later you can the modern day when we look at it how do we really start our prayers 
or anything which happens, how do we say? We say, we talk, talk about Om Hari Shri Ganapati Namaha Abhid Namastu. So we basically in our thing, Ganapati is the important person now. But in earlier days, whom do we invoke first? We talk about Agni. So that means whatever Vedic times that your religion has, that and the religion that we follow here has completely changed. Is that clear? So that is basically going to happen here. <coughs> now, let us understand the most, so basically what happens is there are going to be four Vedic, you know, Vedic corpus literature is a very, very huge thing. But in our context, what you can see is that Vedic literature are going to be classified into different things. You know, first one is that the four Vedas are going to be there. And Vedas ke baad you have Upanishad. Upanishad ke baad you have something called as, you know, Vedanga. You can see, you know, Upaveda. You have Itihasa. Huh? And you have, you know, Smritis. Huh? So if itihas is basically, you can see our uh, uh, Ramayanam, Mahabharatam. And you can see Smriti literature, you can, it's very, very clear. What is Smriti literature? Smriti literature, you can see, it's about, you know, the Manu Smriti, the Yajya Valkya Smriti, the Narada Smriti. So what is it? The huge corpus of uh, this thing is written, which is over a period of, you know, 1000, 2000 years. There's something called the Purana, which is written very late, even like the Puranas are only like 100 years, 1000 years old. Right. Such kind of things are also going to be there. <coughs> so this is the uh, obviously Aranyaka, uh, Brahmana, a lot of things are going to be there. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, so many things like that uh, are going to be there. See, but the most controversial part of Vedam is actually something called as a Purusha Suktam. What is the Purusha Suktam? Purusha Suktam appears in Rigveda's 10th mandala. So you can see this Rigveda is going to be divided into different different mandalas, okay? Different different chapters. And which is chapter here? The 10th chapter becomes very important because that is called as a, uh, uh, that is called as what is it? Uh, 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 you know, is going to be Purusha Sukta. See what is it really speaking about? How, how do you really, uh, first you have to invoke the God. This is how you know Purusha Sukta must recite. Tacham yora vruni mahe gatum yatnyaya Gatum Yatnya Patae Devi Swastirastunaha. So this is how you know you're really invoking the God and you know, let everything be happy, let everything be you know nice, let good thing happen to the human being, let good thing happen to you know the uh, four leg the you know Pashu Pakshi. That is going to be there. And then in this thing, you know, it's a Sahasra Shirsha Purushaha, Sahasraksha, Sahasrapat. What does it really speak about what does it really speak about? It speaks of Sahasra Shirsha Purushaha. What does that mean? A Purusha, a cosmic god called as Purusha is going to have uh, Sahasra Shirsha. The thousand heads he is going to have. Sahasraksha, thousand eyes he is going to have. Sahasrapat, he is going to have thousand legs. And that is how we know uh, the cosmic be, uh, Purusha is going to be mentioned. Now, in the same thing, <coughs> You can read that, you know, in, uh, after a couple of lines, this is what is really going to be explained. Brahmanosya Mukhamasid. What does that mean? Brahmins came from the... Uh, 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 Brahmins came from uh, the uh, Mukham. Bahu Rajanya Krataha. What does that mean? From the biceps, basically the shoulders of, you know, our uh, uh, Purusha came what? Raja, that is Kshatriya. Urutadasya yat Vaishya, that means, you know, it speaks about a Vaishya clan which is going to be coming from their thighs. And you can see, Padhabhyaki Shudra Vajayata, that means, Shudras are going to come from the feet of the cosmic Purusha. So, Purushas, so can you see this thing, Shudra coming from here, Vaishya coming from here, Brahmin, uh, uh, Kshatriya coming from here, and you can see, Brahmins coming from here. So what does it really mean? It really speaks about a hierarchy in the society. Isn't it? But then interestingly what you can see, Chandramo Manaso Jataha. Uh, basically, where does Chandrama coming from? From the mind. From, uh, you know, Chakshaho, you can, what is, you can see, Surya is coming. Uh, uh, then, you know, from Prana, which is the, you know, the breadth of cosmic, you know, Purusha, what happens? You can see, our, uh, these people are going to come, uh, our, you know, Vayu is going to come. So all of this, you know, is really going to be mentioned in the Purusha Sukta, right? So this Purusha Sukta is very, very interesting because if you really read Veda, 
you really come to this idea of what is this a cow. See, if you really see Vedic literature, what happens is that this cow was considered at a very, very higher pedestal. Why? Uh, in, in modern days. Here, you know, you see Gomata. But earlier times, if you really look at this thing, Gomata or, you know, cows and all were not revered with a great, you know, uh, value. Right. Because why? Because if you see the Vedic literature, something called that, the Somayagam. Huh? Here you can see some Somayagams are going to be there. In Somayagams, they really speak about one thing where, you know, uh, meat has to be given as an offering to the God. Meeting, meat has to be given to the offering to a God. Especially, you know, the goat coming. So, these kind of things are very, very common in the Vedic times. But how did everybody become suddenly become vegetarian now? Now, everybody had become vegetarian basically because of what? The influence of Jainism and Buddhism. Jainism and Buddhism. <clears throat> Guys, we need to speed up a bit. I think I have only 15 more minutes. I am going to speed up a bit. We can deal about this thing in more detail later. Right. So basically what happens is that you know, uh, you, you have a lot of, you know, Soma Yagam, which clearly speaks the idea about, you know, the Vedic sacrifices where, you know, cows and, you know, all of this were sacrificed and later this cow thing had really gone away. Right. And one such example is a, something called Agnistoma Yagam, which is basically a thing called Atiratram. So this is basically done to bring rains. Hard to bring rains. Right. That is the thing which is called as Atiratra. Now, after this Vedic period, you can see, you know, the Rig Vedic period, which is basically from 1500 BC, 10,000 BC, things are going to change a bit because you are going to start something called the later Vedic period. In later Vedic period, earlier when you see, you can see, if you see uh, this thing like this, you can see, people are going to settle where? In this place. In the, uh, people are going to settle in the Northwestern portion of our country, basically in which place? In Punjab plains. It was called the Sapta Saindhava region. You can see in another something in Rigveda and all there's something called the Nadi Stuti. All the Nadis which has been mentioned here, you can see most of them are all coming from here in this region. Ganga finds mentioned only once. Yamuna finds mentioned thrice. So, unlike the modern day, you can see Ganga and Yamuna were not the pious thing. Saraswati and Sindhu were the most important Nadi for them. Okay. So, here what happens is that people are going to move from this place to here. Oh, later in the page, you know, it's not worse because, you know, technologically these people are going to be very good. Na? It is not worse. Definitely not. Because people who were living here and there, suddenly what happened? They all became settled agriculturalists. Material properties are going to come. Unlike there is no kind of you know, other material prosperity, the knowledge is going to increase. So you cannot never say that later Vedic period is the worst. Never. Brijesh, I will not uh, you know, agree with your <coughs> answer that. <coughs> so here you can see, uh, the idea is that Settled agriculture started. Huh? You can see, you know, uh, uh, the idea of, you know, uh, 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 agriculture expansion is going to happen. Agriculture surplus is going to happen. Now, why is all of this happening? Because they found iron. Where did they find iron? You can see uh, iron can be found only here. Which is it? Chota Nagpur Plateau, Hazaribagh Plateau. Huh? Hindi bhi use kar sakte hain. Lekin, you know, kya hota hai ki, you know, bahut sare log jo hain. वो हिंदी समझते भी नहीं है ना तो इसीलिए मैं हिंदी यूज नहीं करता अब मैं हिंदी में बहुत ज्यादा देर आज तक बात कर एक तो मुझे इतनी हिंदी आती नहीं हां <laughs> दक्षिण भारत का होना इसीलिए हिंदी ज्यादा नहीं मालूम <laughs> लेकिन क्या है मैं तो बोल भी सकता हूं अगर सर कोई एतराज है तो आप बताइए इफ एनीवन हैज एन यू नो प्रॉब्लम विद मी यूजिंग हिंदी यू कैन टेल मी नो आई कैन स्विच टू यू नो इंग्लिश बैक अगेन बट थोड़ी देर के लिए मुझे भी लगता है कि मुझे हिंदी में बोल देना चाहिए हां तो देख लीजिए यहां पे यहां पे क्या हो रहा है यहां पे हो रहा है कि ना अब पूरा जो देश में अगर जो आयन की जो यू नो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन देखें तो कहां पे है सबसे ज्यादा आयन यू कैन सी छत्तीसगढ़ में है 19 परसेंटेज यहां पे झारखंड जो है यहां पे 12 परसेंटेज है 
और कर्नाटक में भी है ट्वेंटी तो ज्यादातर ज्यादा कहाँ पे है ईस्ट में है ओरिसा 25 परसेंटेज छत्तीसगढ़ झारखंड तो यहीं पे है ना बहुत सारे जो आयन की जो इन्फ्लुएंस तो यहीं से शुरू होता है वो क्या हमारे जो एक्सपेंशन तो इस प्रकार अब देखा जाए तो आयन को जब हिंदी में व्हाट इज इट वेदांत यू डोंट वांट मी टू स्पीक इन हिंदी अच्छा तुम <laughs> अब तो बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम हो गया नाउ आई कैन रिलेट बिग स्पॉट राइट सो इन यूशली इन आर प्लस कोर्सेज यू नो वी हैव दिस थिंग यू नो द प्रॉब्लम हियर इज दैट यू नो इन प्लस कोर्स वी एक्चुअली हैव दैट स्ट्रिक्ट इंस्ट्रक्शंस व्हेन वी हैव इंग्लिश वी यू स्पीक ओनली इन इंग्लिश एंड यू नो व्हेन वी हैव यू नो ओ थॉमस अलेक्जेंडर स्पीक्स दैट यू नो आई हैव टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश सो आई थिंक वील स्पीक टू इंग्लिश ना एंड देन आई विल डू वन थिंग I want another session. I will take in you know Hindi, so that you know uh, you people can also really and uh, you know appreciate my Hindi. Basically, my Hindi is also not that very good. You know, uh, I really st- you know struggle with Hindi. <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, so this here you can see, you know. Uh, so you can see, you know, uh, the concept of Sham Ayas or Krishna Ayas. Right, the Sham Ayas or Krishna Ayas. So that's basically going to be on. This concept. So here is where you know the Vedic period is going to. What you can see is that Vedic period is going to really happen in this area, in the Gangetic plain. Gangetic plain is where all the big actions is going to be there. So like this, what you can see is that these people are going to improve and improve and improve. Like that, if you really see, ha, huh, there are going to be sixteen important, you know, sixteen important cities that are going to evolve here. 16 important cities we are going to come here right so this normal towns are called as janapada and big cities are called as maha janapada huh like that if you see there are going to be 16 of such kind of maha janapada the 16 maha janapada the 16 maha janapada are called as the shodasha maha janapada and where do you find the reference of this thing for the first time you can see the reference of this thing is basically going to come from something called as angutara nikaya angutara nikaya which is basically a buddhist text in a buddhist text we get to hear about what is this now uh, the buddhist text really we can really speak about something called as uh, it speaks about shodasha mahajanapada see which are the kind of you know uh, uh, the kind of things here you can see in the eastern side You have Anga, which is basically the Bhagalpur place of you know our uh, you know some somewhere the border between you know Bihar and West Bengal. Then you have Magadha, which was the capital of Magadha. Ha huh, Nived asks a question. Nived is asking. Uh, <laughs> interestingly, you can say that you know he is asked in Malayalam. Uh, basically, what happened? He is asking the question that you know uh, the uh, this uh, iron was actually found in Chhattisgarh. Iron was found in uh, in Chhattisgarh and Charkhand, but nothing is used there. See, the problem is iron alone is not the only thing. The only thing uh, the river is also important. So basically, what happens is that from Chhattisgarh and Charkhand and all, they should get the iron and they should bring here to there. Settlement which is near a river, and then they used to work on it. That's why you know you don't see settlement patterns here. They keep on shifting, right? So the capital of Magadha is not Patliputra directly. Patliputra is the second capital. Initial capital was this place called as Rajagraha. The modern day it is called as Rajgir, okay? And later they shifted it from there to a place where there are going to be four rivers, which is basically our Patna, or in in Purana times it is called as Partly Putra, or in here you know uh, in uh, in Roman it is called Pali Botro. Huh? People used to call that you know it's also called Kusuma Pura. Lot of things are names are there for Patna because that's a very very important thing. You know, Megasthenes was the great uh, you know <coughs> person who wrote the history of India uh, in the in in their Greek Greek times. That's called you know Indica. 
he speaks about this uh, partly putra and the developments partly putra in great extent okay so that's the thing so basically this society is very very interesting you can see you can see you know kosala uh, you can see you know chedi uh, then you matsya uh, then you can see uh, many people like here you know like you know kuru uh, then a gandhara uh, then you have something called kamboja so basically all these places what can you see you can see many many cities are going to come in the northern gangetic plain see here is where something very interesting is going to happen see what is happening here cities are developing that means which of the four varnas are getting stronger cities are getting stronger that means which of the uh, people i mean you know uh, which of the groups are getting stronger uh, if cities are getting stronger you can see are uh, are this one is getting the kshatriyas are getting stronger right then you can see what is going to come you can see next time you can see are uh, uh, when a trade is getting stronger and stronger that means who is getting a uh, more respect here Bra uh, you know your vaishyas are getting stronger you can see agriculture is going to come because of lot of this thing so what you can see because agriculture is getting stronger and stronger you can see that shudras are getting more important here but even though all these people are going to be there who are the only set of people who actually has some kind of a respect in the society it is always going to be the brahmins so what you can see is that these people because they had they were not given respect even because even after the status was elevated in the society and the creative duties which they did what is going to happen is that lot of people are going to speak against this particular brahmanical order and that is what is really going to happen in this age of mahajanapadas clear basically you can see the kind of people who speaks against this brahmanical order are people like buddha see so that is a buddhism can be called as a akshatriya reactionism what is it buddhism basically can be called as a kshatriya reactionism to a brahmanical order really you can see that similarly what you can see many other people are also going to there come like you know jainism is going to come ha huh? you can see many other heterodox school like charvaka ha huh? you can see ajivika right many other people are going to come they are going to speak speak against what your brahmanical order and that is a characteristic feature of Uh, this one so guys uh, what i'll do is i think i will have to break it here because i think it's already 7 o'clock so i think i will have to uh, you know leave it here for some minute and i will do the second part of it soon i will do the second part of this one where we will take it from mahajanapada and we will bring it all the way till uh, you know the um, uh, vaishya uh, you know people thing uh, the uh, uh, shard harsha vardana things so i think we'll do it in two parts I didn't expect this many questions and you know this many interaction here. What we'll do is you know we'll do it later. Is it okay? Anyway, you can watch it again. You know, uh, I, I think you know after half an hour it will be uploaded in this uh, um, uh, in this uh, you can see our YouTube channel on an academy's YouTube channel. Maybe you can watch it there. cool <coughs> other any questions maybe i can take couple of questions a uh, vedant javed pucho timing i will have to tell i have to you know check up with you know uh, my uh, you know uh, counterpart in you know an academy and you know right <laughs> other questions aap puch sakte hain aap हिंदी में भी पूछ सकते हैं मैं पढ़ के आपको बोल दूंगा अब तो बहुत टाइम है ना मेरे पास टाइम ऑफ माई नेक्स्ट क्लास आई थिंक यू टू स्टेट यू आई कैन नॉट रियली से वेन इज इट आई थॉट आई फिनिश इट नाउ हाँ इधर कुछ है तो आप पूछो अब Ha huh, I think you know I really have to you know look that thing because I expected all of this to be completed because I think I had to go a bit deeper than what I intended to <laughs> right so that's going to be a small problem um 
Mekhala and age might not be the reason. Um, Saraswati, original Saraswati, what did I come up? Hum! Ho sakta hai, okay. Hmm. If not Poonam Dalal Dahiya, which book do you prefer for this reference? So I would rather say instead of really going into this, you know, uh, Poonam uh, uh, Dalal, all the things, that book is good. But what I think is that, you know, you should read your NCRTs first. NCRTs are the only thing. Huh? So, uh, I, what I'll do is, you know, I will keep on posting the timing in the next, uh, you know, um, I don't know, like, um, on next, um, on, on my Facebook page or, you know, on somewhere, if you can really find me on Facebook or something, you know, I can you follow me on Facebook, maybe you'll get that thing. Hmm? Uh, so, I say, NC, uh, Gokul, I'll uh, suggest you that, you know, you take up NCRT and, you know, start working on that. That should be a good thing. Hmm? And you know, Sujata, uh, subscribe to UP, this uh, Unacademy cha YouTube channel. There you'll find the uh, updates coming, you know. It'll be something around this time only, you know, uh, in the evening. Our map is going. No, at GSK, it's not very important. This is only for your understanding that, you know, I have really included it. But map based question for GS is not so important. Right. 